Hi there, how's it going? So, one of my main outlets for my creativity is uh, game development. I'm a hobbyist game developer. Got a page on itch.io and everything, you know, with a handful of published games at this point. And one of the things I wanted to do for a little while is actually make a, is actually make a game for the ZX Spectrum, uh, which was my first computer. Um, still own one to this day, and it's, you know, it's a computer very near and dear to my heart. So I've been messing around with a program called Arcade Game Designer by Jonathan Caldwell, uh, who is known in the Spectrum scene because he made a game called Egghead and several sequels for that. Um, they were on Crash Magazine cover tapes and the like, and he even made a, a game for Eurogamer like 10 years ago now, which I've actually made a video about, you can watch it here. Um, so I started messing around with that using an emulator, and it, you know, it's simple enough to use. Uh, and what little coding you have to do for that is really easy to pick up. There's, there's, there's decent documentation and, and video tutorials if you look online. Uh, and soon enough I had a prototype up and running. Just a little generic man running around. I struggled to find a fitting character and a story and, and the like. Um, now, while I was thinking about this, I thought of a game I made like two years ago called Higgy. Uh, I made it using Game Maker Studio. And it was a ZX Spectrum style game. Uh, like Dizzy, if you remember that. Uh, and he's actually based on um, a guy who works at Eurogamer, part of the video team called Ian Higton. Um, Higgy, short for Higton, of course, there you see. Yeah, tenuous. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he's, a, he's a fan of the Spectrum as well, so it kind of made sense at the time. And he enjoyed it, I believe. But I've been thinking about doing a follow-up for that for a while, and... I wasn't really happy with just making another game in that same vein, you know, just through Game Maker Studio and, you know, with the same template and what have you. Because uh, the reason I make games is to try something new each time and, you know, learn something new. So that got me thinking and I started designing this Spectrum game around the concept of Higgy 2. And it quickly came together after that, you, you know, walking around collecting sausages, uh, because that's an in-joke about Ian Sausage Aim when he's playing games. And I had a bad guy for it, uh, Mr. McMania, who was a very loose parody of the WWE's Mr. McMahon. Um, and that's a character that Ian ran with for a while on streams on his own Platform 32 channel. My door got knocked the other day, and who, to my surprise, who was there but Mr. McMania himself. Oh my god! The, <laughs> the, oh, the, the right guy right. who owns the WWE wrestling. And I was like, holy shit. It's you, Mr. McMania. He was like walking like this down the down the path to my house. I was like, oh. so I came up with the story where Mr. McMania has captured Ian's cat Titch, and he, he goes from screen to screen to to find McMania and rescue his cat from him. And the game actually came together very quickly after that. Uh, the majority of the work is creating the assets for the game, you know, sprites and animation for them. Eight by eight pixel building blocks, you know, the, the blocks you make the screens out of, uh, and then actually putting the rooms together and arranging them and putting the enemies in the rooms and so on and so forth. Using this program, I've created a, this basic platformer. This game isn't necessarily linear. There's a path through to McMania, which you can take without visiting every screen. The only reason you would visit every screen is if you're taking it upon yourself to collect all the sausages available in the game. Not that there's a reward or anything for it. But apart from that, yeah, dodge the baddies, collect sausages, get to the end, you win. So, ladies and gentlemen and non-binary friends, let me present to you Higgy 2, The Wrath of McMania. So, my original idea while making this then was to finish up the game, stick it on a .tap file up on itch.io, send it to Ian and the wider world that way, so he and anyone else who wants to can play it on an emulator. But part way through creating this game, I got to thinking, what if I make a physical copy of this game, and then I can have something to send to Ian, and also keep a copy for myself on the shelf and perhaps make it some for anybody who wants them. Now, immediately there's problems there because one, I have no cassette tapes kicking around, uh, obviously, and two, no tape recorder with which to make the tape. I also wanted to do this cheaply as possible because I didn't really want to throw money at a weird little in-joke, which only a few people would appreciate. 
Um, so the first stop was Amazon and I found they do actually still sell tape recorders that you can buy brand new but they're 20 30 pounds plus and I didn't want to spend that much on them but at least while I was looking I found cassette tapes uh, those are nice and cheap you get actually five for two pound 99 uh, and then the shortest tapes I could find which were C46 which means 23 minutes per side um, which is I believe the C46s are the, the shortest blank cassettes that were commercially available even back in the day. And I also found cassette tape labels, uh, printable ones, which were £2.49 for five sheets containing 12 labels each. And you can also download the label template, so it's nice and easy to make your own labels. Although I did have trouble with this template. More on that later. In the meantime, I got to work using the program GIMP uh, to design the cover for the game. So I contacted Bendix, who was a, a Danish artist who worked for Eurogamer uh, for a few months last year, and she had previously drawn art of Ian um, that he uses for his streams. She kindly gave me her blessing to use the art, which I've used for both the cover and the loading screen. And I actually think her art really lends an authentic and professional feel to this cover, um, which is about as professional as I'm ever going to get. Um, so thanks, Bendix. I also contacted a member of Eurogamer and Platforms 32's community. Uh, a lady called At Fruit Bass who writes fanfiction about Ian. I asked her nicely and she wrote for me a, a short story for the game that's on the cassette inlay. Um, I could, probably could have written something that short myself but I thought it would be nice for her to get involved, uh, get her name on it as well. All that's in the inlay so that, that again just has this nice touch to the game I thought. So really appreciate that uh, At Fruit Bass, thank you. And in the end, I based the cover uh, on old Codemasters budget releases, such as um, such as the original Dizzy games and the, the simulator game, games like Grand Prix Simulator is the one I've got here. I'm very pleased how it came out. No actual copying from those old inlays from Codemasters was actually involved here. I didn't scan the boxes or anything like that. Uh, I've drawn everything from scratch using GIMP. For the labels, download this PDF template from a website, and that was a, I could open that in GIMP. So I designed labels that look like the, st the stick-on labels from Codemasters earlier games. Uh, and that took me no time at all as well, because they're basically just black and white lines, you know, in a, in a kind of an explosion pattern. And then while I was getting all this done, I got lucky on eBay as well. Because um, it was looking like I was going to spend 20 or £30, pounds or even more even, on a little portable cassette recorder. And then I found one sold as not working, spares or repairs, uh, that I actually won with a bid for 99 pence, plus £3.50 post of the package, for, 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 for 99 pence. And I thought, great, a hardware project for me as well. Uh, I get to take it apart and clean it and attempt to repair, replace the belt and, you know, grease it up and everything. And it arrived and it only bloody worked straight away, didn't it? And, and actually it's in really good condition, there's, there's no wow or flutter on the tape as you play them, um, which is kind of what you get with the other cassette tapes, you know, that kind of wobbly noise as the, the belt struggles to kind of pull things. But no, there's none of that, it works really well. So I was only left with one question after that, how do I get the game from PC to tape? So what I did is I went in and saved the game from Arcade Game Designer on an emulator called Speculator, and I used that to save it to a .tap file. Um, in this state, it's not actually loadable at all. It needs um, it needs a loader header, a, a basic program called a loader that tells the Spectrum to well, you know, load the data. I also at this point designed a loading screen using a program called ZX Paintbrush uh, that can import like JPEGs or PNG images and reduce them down to Spectrum resolution and colors, and then you export them then to something that the Spectrum can read. And this is where I contacted Bendix and asked her if I could use the art, and she, yeah, she said yes and all that. Put her art in, uh, plus uh, the logo I designed and the little B Bush logo there, which I've, which I've fashioned again after the Codemasters logo. So I saved that out, and then I used a program in the same suite as the uh, ZX Paintbrush called ZX Block Editor, and I used that to add the screen data to the tap file for the, the He2 game. You just stick it in front of the game's code. And then using a third program in that suite called ZX Editor, and I followed a tutorial. Uh, so I created a, a basic loader that clears space in the Spectrum's memory for the game, loads the loading screen, then loads the game's code into that cleared out memory and runs it once ready. And that bit of code just goes at the front of the tap file. So it's loaded first, of course, because it needs to tell the Spectrum what to do. So once all that was done, 
uh, I tested via an emulator and found it works. It just loads like it's like a standard Spectrum game. So at that point, I tested it on my actual ZX Spectrum uh, using a device I bought a while back called a, a Div MMC Future. And that allows you to load games on the Spectrum uh, from an SD card and it works on actual hardware. So that was, that was very exciting at that point. But how do I get that onto tape? Well, you see, the way Spectrums and most of the 8-bit home computers of the time load code is um, from audio recordings of data. Uh, micro pulses, basically, a, a pulse of one length for a zero and another longer pulse for a one. And they, you get these many times a second. I can't remember how many exactly, but many times a second, just a burst of code. And to listen to it sounds like this horrible screech. Um, it's actually the same technology as dial-up modems, the screeching you hear as you connect to the internet. So that's, that again is micro pulses sending data across, only faster than the Spectrum was able to. So we save this sound to cassette tape. To do this, I made a .wav file of the, uh, of the sound using Audacity. And Audacity allowed me to adjust the volume to a suitable level for the Spectrum, because look, they're fussy. If it's, if it's too loud or too quiet, then it's not gonna work. So I was able to connect to the the PC speakers to the, the, the microphone input on the cassette recorder using a cable I had around, just your standard jack. Um, hit record on the tape player and then played the sound via Audacity and just let it go for those three minutes and record the sound. Quick playback on the recorder and that sounds fine. So there's only one thing left to do at that point and to actually test the tape on my Spectrum. I had to give the, you know, I had to adjust the alignment of the tape heads with the uh, little screwdriver, you know, old tech, eh? And my uh, Spectrum started to read it. Then it loaded the loading screen, displayed that correctly. And about three minutes later, success! My own game had loaded from a cassette tape that I had made and put together. So it was time to actually print the label and inlay. At this point, I had real trouble with GIMP because it was refusing to print at 100% size and Googling around, it sounded like, you know, that is a common issue with GIMP. It just messes you around if you're trying to print out at certain sizes. It, it likes to resize stuff. I found this out the hard way because it, I actually wasted two of my five label sheets this way. It was always printing too small. In the end, I exported the documents from GIMP as PDF files and used Adobe Reader to print them, and that had no issues printing at the correct size. The inlay itself, I just printed out to uh, printer paper that I've got, uh, which is actually a fairly decent stock, I think. It's thick enough. Um, but at this point, I didn't want to spend any more money on real fancy paper that I might screw up. Look, the running theme here is I'm real cheap, okay, you know. So that printed out easy enough, and then I was able to use a craft knife and a little ruler to cut along the lines that I put on the, on the sides and scored the folds using a fairly blunt pair of scissors. I folded the inlay up, cut slits for the spool holder thingies, um, what are they call spindles, I don't know. After that, the labels went on perfectly. They're great, just the right size and everything. So here's the finished product, and I am very pleased with how this looks. It looks pretty authentic. If you get close, you can tell because it was the quality of the, the paper I've used instead of card, and you know, it's obviously not a professional print job, but it looks authentic enough. So to be honest, I'm absolutely thrilled with how this has come out. It's gonna this this is gonna sit on my shelf next to my actual games. So at this point, last thing I can do is package it up, and post a copy of this off to the Eurogamer offices, and then wait for the next time Ian's in the office because he works remotely, so he's not in every day or every week even. Uh, and he has no idea this is coming, not a, not a clue. I've not mentioned it on the open internet, basically, anywhere you could see this. So, let's hope he likes it. Uh, Higgy 2, The Wrath of McMania, uh, made by Mr. Tom, our uh, lovely moderator. Um, and uh, you can see some screenshots on the back there, and also a barcode. If you scan that barcode in, uh, it says prick. So <laughs> that's very cruel. Uh, let's check out the awesome loading screen. That's incredible. Um, it's Bendix's version of me in um, spectrum loading style. Uh, let me go.
Here we go. So, as you will see, this whole game is uh, full of P32 in jokes. There is a level 2 helmet. Uh, I love my little character there. He's uh, in very. I'm going to say he was inspired by the Rainbow Island sprite, by the looks of him. Uh, and you have to collect sausages and rescue Titch. So, there's sausages to collect. And I probably won't read it, but you'll be able to see on the ticker tape down the bottom that. Uh, the thanks from Mr. Tom for various people who've helped. So, Z to jump, uh, left and right <clears throat> to walk. Now, I have done a little bit of playing of this game. I did a bit of... Oh, bums. I did a bit... This bit got me... Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. That's some good sausaging. Oh, oh nearly died. Okay, and then, let you see, you jump on this pipe and you jump up here. And we're back with the Neko-chans. Back with Neko-chan and... Well then, uh, I think it's safe to say Ian liked that. I'm very glad he did. You've always got this voice in the back of your head saying, no, this is rubbish, no one's going to like it. So so to see that he's obviously thrilled to receive the game is, is wonderful, really. And to be honest, it's not the perfect game. It's short with only 21 screens and uh, there's no music. I, didn't, I read a tutorial on how to put music in, but I'm not musically minded at all. I wouldn't have a clue how to make the music in the first place, so... It's just basic, very basic spot effects on the game. Another issue I had is buzz on the tape that was introduced by the tape recorder. A high-pitched electrical buzz, and the game worked for me okay. When I tested it, Ian had some problem getting it running. Uh, and it isn't until more recently that I found out that it's the power supply that was causing the buzz. So removing the power supply and just running the tape player off batteries uh, has pretty much eliminated that issue. But, yeah. Apart from that, I'm thrilled as well. I'm absolutely thrilled. And in case there's anyone actually clamouring for a Higgy 3, um, I wouldn't hold your breath if I'm going to be honest. Done two now, obviously, and and it's getting a little weird, don't you think? <laughs> making making two games about one guy, uh, <laughs> let alone a third. But God bless Ian. His love for the Spectrum, like my love for the Spectrum, uh, has made him a good character for me to work with, basically, when I've not been able to find one of my own. So, uh, <laughs> thanks Ian for being a good sport, I guess. But anyway, my own copy is now up on the shelf there, and now Ian's had a chance to play it, what I'm going to do is release it to the general public. So you can download your own copy now from Itch.io, and just uh, use that file, play it on any Spectrum emulator you wish, and it should work just fine. Uh, it's free, or pay what you want, technically, but I found that what people want to pay is zero, so it's free. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll be I'll actually just be thrilled if anybody plays it, so link in the description, let's go. Thanks to anyone who stuck around this long into the video, appreciate it. If you want to like the video, uh, subscribe if you've not already subscribed, that would be awesome. And I'll see you next time, okay? Bye for now.